And I'm with Richard Woods, a uh, catamaran designer, and today we're, and a sailor, today we're talking about bridge deck clearance. And it's a fairly, um, it sounds like a fancy term, but it's a fairly straightforward thing. Can you tell us a little bit about what bridge deck clearance is, Richard? Well, the bridge deck is essentially the, the boat that you stand on, the space between the hulls. And it's not just the saloon, but also the cockpit um, area would be considered the bridge deck and the forward anchor lockers. And it's one of the most important um, design features that, that you have, basically because the waves can come up and hit underneath. And structurally, it's probably, it's, it's not as bad as it sounds, but it sounds really, really scary when you um, have too low a bridge deck clearance. And that's why it's always important to uh, check on the clearance that you've got if you're buying another a new boat. Um, I've been on boats um, where you haven't been able, you haven't been able to put food on the table, on the saloon table while we've been sailing because it just gets thrown off. Um, and, uh, it's, it's just so horrible, basically, especially when you're sailing for windward or in a confused sea. Um, so. um, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about our boat. We had a lot of bridge deck clearance, I, I guess is correct, because we, we, um, we could actually go underneath the boat by dinghy, but how other than sort of doing that, like what kind of distance are we talking about? Um, feet? inches, meters? Well, that certainly <laughs> is the, the, the uh, what I tend to tell people to do is to make sure that they can get a conventional inflatable dinghy underneath their boat. And of course, you had a very uh, high bridge deck clearance because essentially you had an open deck boat that you then put a cabin on top. Um, so yours was, what, three feet? I would think. At least, yeah, we could, least, um, depending least, on. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, and in, just looking at the boat and saying, can I get an inflatable dinghy underneath? That's as good a guide as any, which is so essentially about 18 inches. And obviously, the, the bigger the boat, the easier it is to have um, a good clearance, essentially because uh, people don't get any bigger when the boat gets bigger. You don't need more than standing headroom in the saloon uh, right. and on a small boat that's going to be really challenging and so anything under about well certainly anything under 30 feet it's uh, essentially impossible to have standing headroom and good bridge deck clearance. I guess you'd end up with a really tall boat for that so from um, uh, what how so you talked about slamming and stuff um, when you have bridge deck clear uh, don't have enough and I, I recall having that happen once or twice where literally the waves come up between the hulls and hit the bottom of the bridge deck and we had an orange I believe that went flying but is that the main thing that occurs or is there do you run into any problems with um, steering the boat or is it is it just a physical discomfort? Well, I've got to say that if in 40,000 miles, which is presumably about what you sailed, an orange fell off once. It went flying. That's pretty, <laughs> went flying. That's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, no, we never, we never really, um, I didn't really understand what bridge deck clearance problems were until I'd been on another boat and had that steady slapping, well, not even slapping, pounding under the hull. It kind of gave me a headache, but I... Um, I was just curious, are there other elements to that that are a problem in sailing? Well, the, the, basically, um, you want the bridge deck clearance, uh, high bridge deck clearance, and you want the bridge deck to be as short as possible. Um, and that's because there's, there's two factors. One is that the waves just sailing along in flat water, um, you obviously, the, boat, the two hulls make waves and they cross underneath the bridge deck. And you can um, get a lot of interference just in flat water with the waves 
hitting underneath. So if you have a low bridge deck clearance and you have the hulls close together, you can have the water hitting the bottom with no waves. And it's a bit like if the further apart you have the, the hulls, it becomes sort of a, a, a molehill of interference rather than a mountain that you're sailing over. Um, and then, so that's one factor that contributes to the slamming, whatever sort of boat you have. Um, and then the other factor is that as you start sailing into waves, obviously the boat's going to pitch up and down. And so the bows go down and up. And so that's why you want the bridge deck clearance as far back and as high as possible, or a bridge deck clearance starting as far back as possible so that it doesn't bash into the waves. And then there's another factor with that is that if you could, you can easily imagine that if you had the bridge deck starting a long way back, but it had a vertical front, and every time a big wave came, it would slam into that front. So you want to have a gentle curve in front, which is essentially usually under the anchor lockers. So it's got the benefit that the anchor lockers uh, drain easily because the water will run to the back. So you want a high bridge deck clearance, you want it to start as far back as possible, and you want a gentle slope at the front. So when we're talking the gentle, the gentle slope, you mean the underside of the boat, correct? The underside, if this is the front of the boat, then you don't want anything like that. You want it like that. Okay. Um, and then the bows pitch up. When the bows pitch up, the stern goes down. So the same applies to the stern and the cockpit, that you really want to have the cockpit higher than the middle of the boat. The boat pitches around the middle. Right. And um, so the lowest point can be in the middle and you want it higher bow and stern. But obviously at the stern, you're not going to have waves um, slamming into the back unless it's really <laughs> bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> You've got worries then. Well, that's um, when it comes up the cockpit drains at the back, right? Yes, that sort of thing, yeah. <laughs> Um, so that's the, so those are the, in uh, priority, high bridge deck uh, underneath, a sloping front that starts as far back as possible, and a higher cockpit then is a good thing. Is there then, any, oh sorry, go ahead. Well then you've got the hulls as well, because as I just said, that the, um, uh, the hulls are making waves, obviously. And so a lot of people, including myself, make a quite an exaggerated S-shaped knuckle. So if this is the waterline here and the hull goes like that. And so the waves that hit come up here and break away instead of going up and hitting the bridge deck. So oh, okay. on the inboard side, you often see boats with either a quite a chamfered um, inner hull side or, or the knuckle um, to help deflect the spray and waves down. And then there's a third factor, which is that most bridge decks are flat underneath, across the boat. Right. But it's actually much better to have it slightly feed. And again, a, a, a try and do it. A good example <laughs> is if you've got this hand is the bridge deck and this is the wave, it's a bit uncomfortable to do this, but that's <laughs> what the wave does when it's flat. But you only have to move it a slight distance and the same wave is not making any noise at all. And it's uh, okay. meant to go like that. And it makes um, one of the times when it's very, very obvious is if you have an outboard in a cell with a flat base, um, which obviously an outboard in a cell is very close to the water, even if the bridge deck is high. And you can hear that slamming badly. Um, that makes sense. So, yeah. so, so when somebody's looking for bridge deck um, clearance, obviously if the boat's in the water, that's one thing, but what kind of clues are you looking for if you're looking at a boat that's hauled out to know what you're getting into? 
Um, well, obviously, the anti-fouling line is going to be a big factor. But on a lot of boats, like, for example, the Fontaine Pajot being one in particular, um, the anti-fouling line is deliberately taken quite a bit above the real waterline. And there's good reasons for that. One is that it saves all the dirty scum along the water because the anti-fouling paint goes higher. So that's a good thing. And the other is that it tends to, your eye is taken to the top of the anti-fouling line. So it effectively reduces the pre-board, the, the look of the pre-board. Okay. So that's why people do it. Um, and so that makes it a bit misleading as to where the, uh, what the real clearance is. So another good um, one is that basically no one designs a catamaran with a, uh, transoms immersed. So if you look from the transom and look forward, you, you should probably get an idea of how much clearance there is. And wow. taking, when you go to look at a boat, you all should always take a tape measure with you. Um, and then you can just very quickly see what it is. Um, because the tape measure is always handy when you're looking at things. That makes sense. Um, I, I do know one of the things that will bring down your bridge deck clearance is having too much gear aboard. So when you're looking at a new boat that's emptied out of gear, are there any rule of thumb to know how far down that's going to sink as you, as you load it up? Well, that's actually, that's another thing you're always seeing. Pictures of boats and they're saying, we just launched it and it's floating on its marks. It's brilliant. Well, no, that's awful because they often they haven't got the even got the mast up. They haven't got half a ton of water and fuel on board. They haven't got a ton of people on board. Um, and it's, the boats always get heavier and heavier and heavier. And over the lifetime, they'll go down hugely. Right. Um, inches. And the other problem with that, of course, is when the boat's heavier, it doesn't respond to the waves so quickly. So you get more bridge deck slamming the heavier you are, which is um, another factor that people say, um, you want to keep the boat light so it will go fast. But in fact, you want to keep the boat light so that it's more lively and bounces over the waves rather than plows through them. So it's just more comfortable all around. And that was a big thing that I found from going ocean sailing that when I decided that I was going to go and not come back, um, I took everything with me and then every time I flew home back to England I would take stuff off the boat and fly home with it because I realized that I didn't want all that stuff and I could manage without. Yeah definitely it's it's easy to think you need all the all the comforts of a home aboard when you really we we tended to divest of stuff all the way along as well that we found we we wore fewer things we needed fewer everything um but great. Well, thank you um, for bridge deck um, information. It sounds like there's more to look for than just sort of how many inches above the water. There's all the design shape and everything, but um, that's really great information. Thank you, Richard.